engineers. We're going to be talking about data engineering in particular and in the data cleansing topic. So we're going to go through this notebook. You can download it here from GitHub or work with it uh, without installing Python through Google Colab. So first of all, why is data cleansing so important? And why are data engineers some of the most high, highly paid data scientists? So we have, uh, for example, a wind farm um, is maybe collecting 150,000 data points every second. That uh, includes you know, wind speed and direction, uh, maybe some performance metrics about each wind turbine. And it's using that information to make small adjustments, like which direction it needs to face, and maybe the tilt of each of the rotors. And uh, it helps it to optimize the power generation, but also avoid damage to the wind farm. Uh, so if there's bad data that comes in, maybe bad wind direction or speed, or uh, maybe there's uh, bad temperature readings for the gearbox, all of that's going to affect the decisions that are made. And so we want to be able to eliminate the bad data and just include the good data. And so that all fits in right here in the overall picture of this course. So we first of all get the data, we combine data sets, we consolidate, we visualize, look at correlations, distributions, and then form this data assessment. If we need additional features, we cycle back this way. But then once we've settled on all of our features that we need, we need to identify and remove certain types of data. That might be bad data, uh, for example, not a numbers, or it might be values that are outliers, that just exceed a certain bound or outside a certain distribution. And then after that, we're going to continue with data scaling, splitting, and then training. So this part right here, cleansing the data and removing the bad data is very important because later on, when we do machine learning, even a few outliers can drastically affect the results. And so we need to make sure that all of the data that needs to be removed is removed in this earlier step. So let's just use an example here. And I'm just going to have a very simple case here. OK, so this one is going to be just a matrix of values. And I'm going to have a 1, a 2, we'll have not a number, 3, 4, not a number as well. That's a bad, another dad, bad data point and then five and six. So we have four rows and two columns, and we have two data points that are bad. So what we want to do is just go ahead and use this one. We're going to use NumPy, but also Pandas, to filter out that bad data. So let's first of all just import NumPy as NP. And let's create our array. OK, and in this array, I can have the individual rows. OK, so I'm going to have four individual rows here. And then I'm going to fill in these individual rows with 1, 2, np.nan. That's going to give me my not a number. And then four, another not a number. And then I have five and six. All right, and then if I print out Z, then you can see that's just going to be an array with these not a numbers, four rows and two columns. And if I hit Shift Enter, then it brings up a new cell. So let's go ahead and um, see if there are any not a numbers in there. So is not a number. All right. And if I just do Control Enter or Command Enter, uh, then I see I, I have this false, false, true, false. You know, so any place where it's not a number, a bad value, it's going to be true. Okay, it's going to be this Boolean true value. So if I say is NP any, are any of these not a number or any of these true, uh, then it's going to say it's true. But if I just want to say, well, let me just do it by row. So I'll say axis 
okay axis equals one then it gives me this new array that says by row if there's not a number on that row so that data row okay there's two of them that have not a number two trues and false on either end because we don't have not a number right here at the beginning or not a number here at the end but um, now I can use that to help me filter out okay create a filter with numpy so let's go ahead and just say uh, Z and then uh, I'm gonna swap these okay bitwise swap so uh, I'm gonna call this you know is this bad okay um, and if I run that then uh, I say is not bad um, and then it's going to say not bad. I, my first and my last row are not bad. So you can see a true here and a true here. So what I can do is filter those out. I can say is not bad. Um, and then it's just going to take those remaining rows. Okay, so I can see I filtered it out. So now the only ones that I have left are just this first one right here and the last one. So those are the only ones that are remaining. I've removed this one and uh, the second and third rows. All right, so that's how we do it in NumPy. Pandas is a little bit easier than that because of something called data frames that we can use to um, Let's see, if I do that again, then it uh, says there's nothing left for the bad values. Let me just run this again, and then run this again. You can only run it once to get that result, because I've renamed Z. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and create this same array or matrix within, numpy, within pandas as a pandas data frame. So I'll import pandas as pd. And then let's create the same Z, but it's going to be now a data frame instead of a NumPy array. And to do that, use these uh, squiggly brackets. And I have X and then colon. And I'm going to do my first column. OK, there's my first column and then comma. And then I'm going to have my Y and another colon. And let's go ahead and put in the Y values. So that's going to be two three, not a number, and six. Okay, and then if I do the head of that, or I can just do Z, because I only have four values there, um, there's my data frame. Okay, so now what I want to do is uh, come down here and insert a cell below, and I can do Z dot drop and it not a number okay so when you do that it just looks for any row okay that has not a number and then removes that and then the other thing we can do is uh, fill NA so if I want to fill those with maybe zero values then it's just going to take that instead of removing that row it's just going to take the not a number and fill it in with a zero but let's say I wanted to fill it in with uh, the mean value instead. Okay, and you can see that it took all the remaining good values. So 1 plus 4 plus 5 equals 10. Then divided by 3 is 3.33. And this one, I had 2 plus 3 plus 6 is 11. And 11 divided by 3 is 3.66. And so I filled in with the mean of that column. All right, so that's another way to do it. Uh, sometimes we just want to filter out not just by bad values, but we also want to uh, maybe filter out by value. Let's say we have an outlier. So what I want to do now is just say my result equals, and then Z, and then inside this, I'm going to put in my filter. So Y is less than 5.5. And then I can do print result, or I can just type in result here. And then that's just going to show that it's just going to take um, these first two rows, okay? Because I didn't, let's say I dropped, or let me just print out Z up here, just so we can see it. 
Okay, so it's just going to look for any values of z that are less, um, have a y value less than 5.5. So it excludes the not a number, that one's not included, but it's just going to include these first two rows. I can also combine uh, different things, like let's say I want to get, I can use ands or ors in this as well. So let's say I said it has to be less than 5.5, and um, I'm going to say that z of y is greater than or equal to 1. Now, um, you got an error here because it's just the order of operations. We have to put parentheses around this. So to indicate that we want to do the comparison first and build the booleans that are going to satisfy that those conditions, and there you can see that I have it's going to be less than 5.5 and greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so I could have put this, um, let's say x is greater than 1.1. Okay, and then it filters everything out there. Okay, so uh, you don't want to be left with with an empty set, but you can put in um, say greater than or equal to one, then it'll include that. Okay, but then it's going to get rid of the not a number. Okay, so uh, what we can do as well is just a, another type of uh, more complex filters. Um, Okay, we can do successive mess, mess, uh, methods, such as when we put the dot in there. So I'm just going to give you another example here of, okay, of how this is done. We have result equals, and then I have z, and I'll say that z of x, okay, we want to say anything that's not null. All right, and then I can put another dot here. So it's going to do this one next, and then I'll fill in with um, zeros. Okay, let me do this this one first, just so we can see it, and then we'll add these other ones. Uh, let's see. I think I'm missing a result. Okay, S there. Okay, so I just took out any of the x values. Um, that are not a number, so I put the not null. And then what I'm going to do is add fill NA, and I'll put a zero there. So now for Y, I'm going to fill in a zero value right here. And then I can also, uh, you see the index here, zero, two, three. Then I can reset uh, the index. So it's like that didn't even exist. And okay. And you'll see that index is now one of the columns. But if I want to drop the index, then I can say drop equals true. So it doesn't add it as a new column uh, once you dropped it. It just resets it to 0, 1, 2. OK, so what we've done is uh, just come back up here to the top, showing how to filter out with NumPy and uh, just using these boolean values to determine which ones are not a number. You could also do filters with NumPy as well. Pandas is a little bit easier with data frames. And you can do things like drop NA or fill NA, or you can set up filters like this where you look for certain conditions and then that builds a boolean, true, false, whether you want to include it or not, and then just includes that subset okay, in, uh, in the final result. Okay, so uh, this is data cleansing. I'm just going to come back here and just show the overview of data engineering and where we're going next. So we have finished up this part one. We did gathering data, statistics, visualization, data cleansing. The next one that we'll do is going on to feature engineering, where we uh, build features to create uh, new input descriptors for regression for classification, um, and also how to convert things from strings to numbers, and the way you do that with uh, you know images, uh, discrete categories, and others. Okay, so this is uh, data cleansing, and we're going to go on to part two now of the course.